I'm Mr. Mega Man Fan. This is the PC Engine Files, and today we are looking at a game so special. It's called Special Night Rider Special. And if you folks will indulge me for just a moment, I've always wanted to do this. Night Rider, a shadowy flight into the dangerous world of a man who does not exist. Michael Knight, a young loner on a crusade to champion the cause of the innocent, the helpless, the powerless, in a world of criminals who operate above the law. Okay, so I admit my timing may be a little off compared to the actual intro from the TV show, but it should show you how much I loved that show as a kid, that I still know all of the words to the intro by heart. In fact, my favorite Hot Wheels car when I was little was a car that was jet black with a switch underneath where you could flip up the headlights, and to me, that was the Knight Rider car. That was Kit. His grill didn't glow with the red beams swooping back and forth like the real Kit, but it was as close as I could get as a kid to actually having a miniature Hot Wheels version of Kit. And I adored that car, and I wish I still had it today. I even own a boxed copy of Knight Rider for the NES, but this game and that game are completely different other than having a background in common being the TV show starring David Hasselhoff. This game is more akin to OutRun or Chase HQ, where you have to complete a course in a certain amount of time and take out bad guys along the way, getting bonus time for each one of the checkpoints that you reach, and using the twin machine guns mounted in Kit's hood to gun down the bad guys in their vehicles along the road. I was hoping at some point I could actually drive into the back of the Knight Industries van and get upgrades or repairs, but that doesn't seem to be possible, or if it is, I never figured out how to do it. In fact, early on in this game, I was using the one button to accelerate not realizing that I was blowing through all of the turbo jets that Kit had, so that's not how you're supposed to accelerate. What you actually do is hold up on the D-pad. That's how you increase your speed. So when you slow down because you hit a car or you were too busy shooting at something or you were going around a steep curve, you gotta hit up again to get your speed back up. And of course, it's in kilometers per hour, not miles per hour, because this game is for Japan, not the United States. At which point you may be asking, well, why didn't they localize it for TurboGrafx-16? Knight Rider was a very popular show on NBC, had a huge cultural cachet, and would no doubt have been an even bigger success released in the United States as compared to the Japanese market, where I don't know if Knight Rider was nearly as popular. I mean, obviously it was popular enough to get this game, but was it the smash hit that it was in the United States? I can't say, because I didn't grow up in Japan, and I really don't know. Here's my insight into why it wasn't localized, though, and I may be right and I may be wrong, but I think you'll agree with my conclusion. The NES version was released in 1988 in Japan and 1989 in North America, but this wasn't released in Japan until 1994. At that point, TurboGrafx-16 was pretty well dead in the United States and the Turbo Duo was dying its last gasp. It was breathing its last breath. So why would they spend the time and the money to localize Knight Rider Special for the US market? Because it was already well past the heyday of the TV show when it was at its peak of popularity in the 1980s. The original TV show ran on NBC from 1982 to 1986. If the NES game came out in North America three years after that, it was already just barely clinging on to the memory of Knight Rider for most people. And by 1994, I think it's pretty safe to say the value of that brand it just wouldn't have been the same. Now, there have been sequels and revivals to Knight Rider over the years, but the one that people have the fondest memory of is David Hasselhoff as Michael Knight. That's what this is based on, and 1994 is really pushing it for relevancy. But obviously, back in video, 
thought there was enough money in releasing a PC Engine version of it, and they probably weren't wrong given that the PC Engine was a very big console in Japan, far bigger than the TurboGrafx-16 in the United States. In Japan, PC Engine rivaled Famicom in sales and popularity for many years until the format finally died out, and that's partly due to bad planning on their part with sequels to the PC Engine. I mean, the PC Engine Duo was fine, but the core graphics and the super graphics both kind of flopped, and things never really got better from there. So it was their own fault that the PC Engine brand died out, but there was still a large enough install base with PC Engines and Duos and the portable version that we call Turbo Express in the United States. There were a lot of different people who had a way to play PC Engine games. So even if you sold Knight Rider Special to 1% of that install base, that would probably be a healthy profit for back in video. And the good news for them is that by 1994, the licensing rights for Knight Rider had to be pretty darn cheap. Because again, this was over a decade after the show debuted on NBC and close to a decade after the show's run ended. So why not license it for the cheap, use whatever name value Knight Rider had, and basically make an OutRun slash Chase HQ clone, just slapping that license on top of it and getting as much bang for your buck as you possibly could. And no doubt, Packin' Video made a profit on this. I don't know if it was a gloriously huge amount, but I'd be hard pressed to believe they didn't make some amount of money on it, enough to keep their business afloat and keep going producing more games for various consoles with whatever licenses they could afford to grab. Now I'm left to ponder how really best to succeed in this game. I don't need to localize it to understand the gameplay as such, but I do need to figure out when the best time it is to kick in the turbo jets because it just seems like something you do at random for fun and it leaves you hanging in the air for a long while when you do it, but there seems to be no strategic purpose to it in the actual game itself, unless I'm missing something. There's also a boss fight when you get to the end of a stage, and I've yet to figure out how to win that boss fight. I assumed you would just simply gun down the car with your machine guns. That doesn't seem to do it. Ramming it with your turbo jets doesn't work. I don't know what it takes to beat the boss, so I'm going to have to keep playing Knight Rider Special a few more times in order to draw a conclusion on how to win and advance to the next stage. But the good news is, as Chase HQ and OutRun clones go, it's sufficient. It's got a good soundtrack, the car is easy to control, everything feels right, it's just I don't know how to win at it yet. It's going to take me a little time to figure that out but I think it's worth the effort. Knight Rider Special is special to me because it's based on a TV show that I loved. I wish it had come out sooner for both the Japanese and the US market, and then maybe it would be finally remembered and held up in critical acclaim today, which I think not even the NES game was. That one is kind of a footnote in history of licensed NES games, and I actually think Knight Rider Special is a little bit better it's just a little bit more fun to play. I'm Mr. Mega Man fan. This has been the PC Engine Files. Like, share, comment. They all help the channel with the engagement metric. And of course, subscribe if you're not a subscriber to get new episodes of the PC Engine Files every week and new content every day. Thanks for watching and enjoy the music while I let it fade out to black. I'll see you all later.